guys, how's it going? I want to talk about a book I recently read called In the Kingdom of Ice by Hampton Sides. I have to tell you right now, this is one of the best books I have ever read. Now, for those who don't know, Hampton Sides is the editor of Outside Magazine. He's written some books. He's <clears throat> not really very prolific because his books tend to be very thoroughly researched. And this book is no exception. It took him three and a half years to research this book. And it was definitely well worth it because it truly is a great book. And the book tells the story of an Arctic expedition that took place in 1879. And it was financed by the owner of the New York Herald. And he was the same guy who sent Stanley into Africa to find David Livingston. And he believed, and he had a belief, that you shouldn't just report the news, but you should also try to make the news as well. So in the late 1800s, there was still a belief that the North Pole might not have been all ice. A number of European map makers at the time had a belief that there was an ice ring surrounding the North Pole. And once you broke through this ice ring, there was then a warm polar sea. And in this warm polar sea, they believed that there might have been an island. And on the island, there may have been a uh, you know, civilization of some sort, an Inuit civilization, possibly even a forgotten Viking civilization. I know there was a movie that came out in the 70s called Island on Top of the World, and that's what it's about. It, you know, a group of explorers go to the North Pole and they find this island on top of the world that still has a Viking civilization that is exactly the same way it was in you know a thousand a.d so it's a good movie if you haven't seen it i definitely recommend you check it out but anyway you know there was still this belief like i said in the late 1800s you know that quite possibly the north pole might not have been all ice that there could have been this warm polar sea and you know as a result of this um, the owner of the New York Herald wanted to launch an expedition to the North Pole. So he got a ship. The name of the ship was called the Jeanette, and then he assembled a crew of 30 men. And each man could do each man could do a different thing. There were, you know, there was a naturalist, there was a marksman, there were cooks all together. You know, a crew of 30. And then he got the, a captain, and the name of the captain was George DeLong. Now, George DeLong was one of those guys who was too young to fight in the Civil War. And there were a number of people like this. And as a result of being too young to fight in the Civil War, he had a strong sense of guilt. He wanted to go out and do something adventurous. And being that he was a Navy man and a captain, he saw this as his opportunity. So the voyage started in 1879 in San Francisco, and then they, the Jeanette sailed directly northward and straight through the Bering Sea. Eventually they got to the ice, and the ship got stuck in the ice. They were stranded for many months. Ultimately, the ship ended up being crushed by the ice and ended up sinking sinking, but they were able to save a large amount of equipment, ammunition, you know, various other supplies, including a couple lifeboats. They dragged the lifeboats across the ice, and they, all the while, they were, you know, hunting seals, walruses, polar bears, they were fishing, and eventually they managed to reach a clearing in the ice. And this was after they had, you know, already been away for a few years. So they managed to make it to this clearing. And when they reached the clearing, they boarded the lifeboats. And the water was extremely rough. One of the lifeboats, and this is the lifeboat that had George DeLong in it, ended up in a part of northern Siberia that 
didn't have a large population and as a result of there not being a lot of people there they weren't able to find much food because it was a very harsh region and they ended up starving to death how the other boat however ended up in a part of Siberia that had a relatively substantially large native population and they ultimately ended up being rescued. Now the natives were a little hesitant at first to make contact but eventually they did. Like I said they did get rescued. They made it to the largest city in Siberia and then to Moscow then to England and then back home to New York where you know they they were then you know safe and you know were able to tell everyone about their expedition and what they had experienced like i said unfortunately george de long was unable to get rescued and due to the fact that like i said he didn't have enough food and supplies ended up starving to death now another interesting side note is all this was going on, there was actually a rescue expedition. The rescue expedition also left from California and one of the people aboard was actually John Muir, the naturalist. And they kind of went a similar route. They were, you know, searching for George De Long. Um, you know, they weren't successful in finding him. However, they did end up in an island called Wrangell Island which is a northern island, and it's called the Galapagos Island, uh, the Galapagos Island of the North, because it has the largest number of polar bear dens found anywhere in the world, a large number of walruses, a lot of Arctic foxes living there. But probably the most interesting thing about this island is the fact that it has a very large number of mammoth skeletons on the island. And that's because mammoths actually lived on this island until 1700 BC. And, you know, mammoths all over the world had already been, you know, extinct for 6,000 years. But yet they managed to survive and linger on on this island until 1700 BC. And, you know, that's not too long ago. That's biblical times. So I thought that was really fascinating to learn about this island. And, you know, Hampton Sides talks quite a bit about that in the book. So ultimately, you know, I definitely thought this was a great book. Because like I said, it tells a story of something you don't really hear that often. I mean, I had actually never heard of this Arctic expedition before. And I know at the time it actually was fairly well known. But, you know, today... you pretty much don't hear anything about it at all so ultimately you know i do recommend this book it's called in the kingdom of ice by hampton sides i recommend it it's a great read i think you should check it out thank you